Welcome, fellow cannabis enthusiasts. Today, let's delve into the captivating realm of stress training cannabis plants. But before we begin our exploration, don't forget to show your support by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel for more engaging content on cannabis. Let's embark on this enlightening journey together. In the world of cannabis cultivation, the practice of stress training plants holds a legacy deeply rooted in the ancient wisdom of horticulture and agriculture. Throughout history, farmers and growers have intuitively understood the pivotal role of environmental stressors in shaping the growth and development of plants. Whether through pruning, bending, or exposure to harsh weather conditions, these stressors trigger physiological responses in plants, fostering adaptations that bolster their survival and reproductive prowess. Within the realm of cannabis cultivation, stress training techniques are meticulously employed to manipulate growth patterns and physiological responses, ultimately enhancing yields and bolstering overall plant health. While techniques like topping, supercropping, and low-stress training have gained prominence in recent decades, their fundamental principles have likely been woven into the fabric of cannabis cultivation for generations. Join us as we journey through the history, evolution, and practical application of stress training methods, particularly low-stress training, LST, in the context of cannabis cultivation. Low-stress training, LST, finds its origins in age-old horticultural wisdom, but its application to cannabis cultivation has seen a recent surge, especially within the realms of indoor growing and modern cannabis cultivation. One of the earliest documented mentions of low-stress training in cannabis can be traced back to the pioneering work of Jorge Cervantes in his groundbreaking book Marijuana Horticulture, the Indoor-Outdoor Medical Grower's Bible published in the 1980s. In his seminal work, Cervantes outlined techniques like bending and securing branches to encourage horizontal growth, tailored specifically to maximize light exposure and yield in indoor grow environments. Since then, the techniques of low-stress training have been honed and popularized by cannabis cultivators worldwide. The advent of online forums, social media, and dedicated cultivation communities has facilitated the sharing of knowledge and best practices. Today, low-stress training stands as a cornerstone of modern cannabis cultivation, particularly in indoor and greenhouse settings where growers strive for optimal yields, superior quality, and streamlined efficiency. As we delve deeper into innovative cultivation methods like the screen of green technique, we propel ourselves towards these new horizons in cannabis cultivation, unlocking unprecedented productivity and quality. The screen of green, also known as the Escrog method, stands as a popular low-stress training technique revered by cannabis growers worldwide for its ability to maximize yields and optimize light distribution. Here's how to implement the screen of green method effectively in your cannabis cultivation journey. Prepare your setup. Begin by setting up your grow space with adequate lighting and ventilation. Ensure a sturdy support structure is in place to hold the screen above the plants securely. Choose your plants. Select healthy cannabis plants with vigorous growth and multiple branching points, ideal for scrow G training. Install the screen. Position the screen above the plants at a height conducive to ample vertical growth during the vegetative stage. Ensure the screen is level and securely anchored to the support structure. Begin training. As the plants grow, Gently bend and tuck the branches under the screen, guiding them through the holes or openings in the mesh. Encourage horizontal growth along the screen for optimal canopy development. Monitor and adjust. Regularly check the plants and continue training as they grow. Tuck new growth under the screen and adjust branch positioning to ensure even coverage and light distribution. Flowering stage. Transition the plants into the flowering stage once they have filled out the screen and reached the desired size. Continue to tuck any stray branches under the screen to maintain an even canopy. Support flowering sites. As the plants develop buds, provide additional support such as trellis netting or plant stakes to prevent sagging or breakage. Harvest. When the plants reach maturity and the buds have fully developed, Harvest them according to your preferred timeline and techniques. 
The Scrow G method empowers growers to unlock their full yield potential by promoting the development of multiple flowering sites while ensuring each bud receives optimal light. Furthermore, by spreading the canopy horizontally, the SKI-ROG method fosters a more even distribution of light and airflow, mitigating the risks of mold and pests. Now let's advance further on our exploration of low-stress plant training by deepening our comprehension of the bending. Bending and securing is simple yet highly effective. This method empowers cannabis growers to shape their plants' growth patterns without inducing significant stress. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to master the art of bending and securing your cannabis plants for optimal growth. Choose the right time. Perform bending and securing during the vegetative stage when the plant's stems are still flexible, avoiding the more rigid stems of the flowering stage. Identify suitable branches. Select the tallest or dominant branches that may be hindering light penetration to lower branches. Gently bend the branches. With gentle pressure from your fingers, Coax the selected branches downwards or to the side, encouraging horizontal growth. Secure the branches in place. Use soft ties or plant training clips to gently secure the branches in their new positions, allowing room for growth and movement. Monitor and adjust. Regularly check the plant's progress and adjust ties as necessary to accommodate new growth and prevent constriction. Repeat as needed. Depending on your plant's size and shape, Repeat the bending process throughout the vegetative stage to achieve an even canopy. Transition to flowering. Once your plant has reached the desired shape, transition it to the flowering stage, continuing to monitor and adjust ties as needed. By employing bending and securing techniques, growers promote more even light distribution, enhance airflow, and encourage the development of multiple bud sites. Through a combination of bending and securing techniques to foster optimal growth conditions, growers set the stage for techniques like lollipopping to further refine their cannabis cultivation practices, ultimately aiming for superior bud quality and yields. Lollipopping, a technique that aims to elevate airflow and channel the plant's energy towards producing premium quality buds. Here's a detailed guide on how to master the art of lollipopping your cannabis plants for optimal growth and yield. Choose the right time. Perform lollipopping during the early stages of the flowering phase, typically around the end of the third or beginning of the fourth week after transitioning from the vegetative stage. Identify lower growth. Inspect the plant and pinpoint lower branches and foliage that receive minimal light and airflow, often producing smaller, less dense buds. Remove lower growth. Using sharp, clean pruning shears, meticulously remove lower branches and foliage, prioritizing smaller, weaker growth while preserving larger, more developed branches and buds. Create a clean canopy. As you prune, aim to create a clean, open canopy with ample space between branches to facilitate better light penetration and airflow, thereby reducing the risk of mold and pests. Monitor and maintain. Throughout the flowering phase, diligently monitor the plant and promptly remove any new growth emerging on the lower portion, ensuring the plant's energy is directed towards larger, more desirable buds in the upper canopy. Lollipopping offers significant benefits, especially for indoor growers or those with limited space, as it optimizes grow space efficiency and enhances yields. As indoor growers seek to maximize their yield potential, techniques like lollipopping and defoliation become essential tools in optimizing plant health and productivity. Defoliation. Defoliation involves carefully removing select leaves from your cannabis plants to enhance light penetration, airflow, and ultimately, bud development. But when's the right time to defoliate? Generally, it's during the early to mid-flowering stage, about three to four weeks in, when the plant's root system is robust and buds are forming. Now let's get hands-on. Start by identifying those large fan leaves that may be shading lower bud sites or impeding airflow. Using sharp, clean scissors, snip off the selected leaves at their base, ensuring minimal damage to surrounding tissue and buds. Remember, start with a few leaves at a time and assess as you go. Monitor your plant's response closely. Too much stress from overpruning can hinder its ability to thrive. Be gentle, especially during hot or dry conditions to avoid dehydration and heat stress. When done thoughtfully, defoliation can significantly improve bud quality and maximize your yields. 
So approach the process with care and tailor your pruning strategy to suit the unique needs of your plants. As we wrap up our exploration of low-stress training techniques in cannabis cultivation, it's clear that these methods are not just tools, they're pathways to unlocking the full potential of the plant. From bending and securing to the screen of green method and lollipopping, each technique empowers growers to optimize yields, enhance quality, and nurture cannabis with precision and care. Looking ahead, it's apparent that the journey of discovery and innovation in cannabis cultivation is ongoing. With each technique mastered, we move closer to a future where efficiency, productivity, and sustainability intertwine, creating endless possibilities for cannabis cultivation. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe for more insightful content. We'd love to hear from you, so drop a comment below letting us know what you'd like to see in future videos. Your feedback drives our content, and together we can continue exploring the exciting world of cannabis cultivation. Thanks again, and until next time, stay curious.